going down you guys bearded retro 84 coming at you again a uh, little different view uh, gonna show some of my collection in the background we got some toys a lot of vhs movies huge huge nostalgia for video cassette movies speaking of nostalgia been going around on youtube watching some people that i've recently discovered other people that i have watched for a long time but just discovering new videos and there was one a lot of people were doing a few years ago of the top five nostalgic games from your childhood. And I thought, oh, that's kind of a cool idea. I'm going to give that a shot. So these are my top five nostalgic video games of all time. Number one, don't know how well that's going to go. I'll get a little closer. Super Mario Land on the Game Boy. When I was a kid, the Game Boy was... The first and one of the only systems I did not have to share with my older sister. So it was my personal system. It's the one I got to play. I got to choose all the games for. I got to take anywhere and do whatever I wanted with. And my dad playing softball my entire life growing up. I brought my Game Boy with all the time. Because the closest drive we ever had was probably about a half hour. Every time he had to go play softball. So my Game Boy came with me, and so did this little gem right here. This is the one game I probably have more hours into playing than any other video game in my entire collection, which is probably about 750 games or so, over 30 different systems. And this one right here has been played more than the rest of them. Well worth it. Fantastic game. I will still play this from time to time. I'll pop it in the Retron 5. And be good to go. I also have it emulated down onto my Raspberry Pi because of convenience, essentially. So if for any reason you do not own this and you have a way of playing it, I highly, highly recommend it. Next game is uh, my sister and I, when we were growing up, the one system we got was the original Nintendo. You know, a few years later is when I got the Game Boy for myself, but... We had the original Nintendo. Sorry, Nintendo. That's what we had. Uh, we never really got to rent games. We Christmas or birthday, usually we'd get a new game or two. But for the most part, we kind of just dealt with what we were given. Well, I had a subscription to Nintendo Power around the time the Nintendo 64 came out. My sister and I received the Nintendo 64 for Christmas one year as a shared gift along with uh, uh, Mario 64, Mario Kart, and Diddy Kong Racing were the three games that we got with it. Well, looking through my Nintendo powers, which I really wish I still had because those things go for a pretty penny nowadays. And I don't feel like wasting too much money on them because everybody wants them. But anyway, I was looking through my Nintendo Power, and there's a short little article in the back about a game coming out. A sports game. And for some reason, I just wanted this game so, so bad. My father even would read the article about it. And he had made me a promise that if we ever go to the store and see it, we'll pick it up. Well, for some reason, I didn't think this game was going to be as popular as it was at the time. Because I remember going to Walmarts and Kmarts and Targets. Always seeing it sold out on the shelves. Always seeing it sold out, no matter what. One day, we're going to Walmart, and there it is. One copy left. I'm in the electronics by myself. I have to go find my parents in another part of the store and bring them back and show my dad this game. We picked it up right then and there. Not the greatest game in the world, but just a lot of fun we had back playing with it because even my father would play it with me. That game, Nagano Winter Olympics 98. Uh, essentially a bunch of little games on here. Uh, some of them are mildly fun. Other ones are just stupid. I do remember... Uh, big one we played was the speed skating on here with the speed skating you would have to get in rhythm you take the control and you have to be in rhythm and you hit the left bumper and they glide on their left leg you hit the right bumper it glides on the right leg 
you know, there's a little meter so you can in the corner and you can kind of see when the uh, direct correct moment to be hitting the bumpers is. My dad never paid attention to the meter. This was my dad playing it. If we have it on the TV, one second. We have it on the TV. This is him. Controller ball right here. As I'm almost dropping games on the ground. He would get in the rhythm. He would move his whole body back and forth like he was doing a really, really bad dance move. Just his whole body sway back and forth. And he always kicked the shit out of us. Every time. I don't know how because you have to control stamina and there's a part you hit it right and you start getting stamina back on it. I don't know how. He just would get in the rhythm and it was game over. So that game, really, really cheap. Not even close to one of the must-have games for your collection, but I'm always going to have that nostalgia factor for that game, which is why I love it so much. Another game. I was in first grade, and I got the chicken pox. Anyone who's ever had chicken pox, which should be most people, you can't go to school for a week because you're contagious. So I remember first grade, I'm laying in bed constantly. My dad brings an old, old rabbit ear antenna TV up into the room, and we hook up mine and my sister's original Nintendo for up to it. And... At that time, there was very select few games that were mine and very select few that were my sister's. Pretty much most of them we shared. But one game that was all mine, and this game I had tried to play it again recently, and no, it does not hold up well. But for a week straight, all I did was play this game, and I got really good at it, and I was able to win all the time on it, and just loved it every second of it that game wwf wrestlemania the first licensed wwf or wwe now wrestling game ever created not a great roster on there terrible controls terrible graphics the sound for some reason i really like the sound but it just kind of like piercing your eardrums just not great i like i said i get the glare off a little bit i've tried to replay this recently and it's a no-go i can't but because this is the game i had and i played throughout that time when i was younger i just have to have it in this video because it has that much nostalgia for me for that time Next up, we've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie on the Sega Genesis. Uh, we were pretty much a Nintendo household growing up. We got the original Nintendo. We got the Game Boy. We got the Nintendo 64. It was after we had received the Nintendo 64 that I bought my very own Sega Genesis. I bought it from a friend of mine. He had... This system, a couple controllers, and like 20 games, and I paid 40 bucks for it. I don't know how I had 40 bucks. I think my parents gave it to me so I could buy it because they saw how much I wanted it. But this is one of the games I got. And a uh, childhood friend of mine who lived two houses down from me, he was one. They pretty much they got the new game systems when they came out, essentially. He had a Sega Genesis also, and, you know, that was my experience playing. It was over at my friend's house, and now I had my own. And this game I fell in love with. Beat em up game with the Power Rangers. That's my childhood right there. Beat em ups and Power Rangers. Any random mother crap, but we'll get into that in a later video. But this game, I remember playing it for hours and hours and hours on end. We would go through, we would play it, we would beat it, we would start all over again. Or this one level, you have to find a hidden entrance in a rock that leads into a cave. If you don't, you keep just going through the level over and over and over again. And I remember we did not know that until probably the 30th time we played this together. 
and we finally figured it out. So we were able to beat the game every time we play it. But yeah, we spent hours not being able to do anything because we didn't know we had to break a rock and go in to a cave. But just because of that, one of the few games I had a lot of fun playing with other people and definitely not as great as I remember it, but has that nostalgia factor that just makes it well worth putting in this video. All right, my fifth and final game. This game is essentially what got me into playing video games. This is the first video game I've ever played in my entire life. Young kid, not this version. The version I played, my father had an Intellivision. And I remember thinking that was so cool. You know, we play some games on there. I Tron Deadly Discs was one of them I really enjoyed. Uh, Burger Time was a lot of fun. Uh, downhill Skiing was a lot of fun. But it was something he didn't have a lot of the overlays and no instruction manuals for a lot of the games. So you just kind of go, what am I doing? So those were some of them I could figure out. But this one, I remember I'd watch him play this game and be in awe and he'd let me try it and I would die in two seconds. But that game, Pitfall. This one right here is for the Atari 2600, which is pretty much the same exact game, just a different console. This game, so much fun. Being Pitfall Harry and swinging on vines over water and jumping on alligators' mouths when they're closing them and fighting scorpions and snakes and stuff down in the pits. This was what got me to where I am now with collecting numerous things from my childhood because I love feeling that nostalgia factor every time I'm in my man cave. This little gem is essentially what started it all. Well, that's my video of my top five nostalgic games of all time. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know yours. If you want to make a response video, go ahead and do that. Uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed. This is Bearded Retro 84. We'll talk to you later. Peace!